Thank you very much, and uh, welcome, everyone. Um, today we're going to be talking about, uh, obviously, as you know, live application process development and cycle design. Um, now, this is going to be more based on um, not an empirical or, or an empirical approach. For those of you who've done freeze drying, and I've done a lot of it in my in my past, there was always a lot of trial and error that was associated with with developing a you know not only a formulation but also a, a, a lotalization cycle. And generally, these cycles were not optimized a lot longer than they need to be needed to be, and it, you know. It just got to be where you're throwing away time and money. Um, so really within the past 15 to 20 years, there's been a lot more understanding and science going into designing um, localization cycles and really even focusing on the formulation. And we'll touch on those topics a little bit again you know, within the, the time frame that we have today. We're just going to sort of brush over some of these things. But again, it's just to get you to think about some of the things when you're designing a uh, formulation or a cycle to be uh, to, to freeze dry your product. Now I've given you some references here. Um, these are really good um, as far as if you're interested in going back and, and getting a little more in depth about some of the things we're going to talk about today. Okay, the goal of lyo development, and this should be pretty intuitive. Uh, the goal is to design the fastest, most robust cycle which consumes the least amount of energy and does not compromise product quality. Basically what that means, we want to get you know, the highest quality product in the fastest time we can because, I mean, let's face it, freeze drying, you know, not only is the equipment extremely expensive to maintain, um, uh, but again, the, the resources it requires, cleaning, sterilizing, uh, electricity, water, all of those, you know, really make freeze drying the most unit or the most expensive unit operation as part of a manufacturing process. We want to keep it as short as possible. Now, when we choose the values for what we use during a freeze drying cycle, shelf temperature, chamber pressure, hold times, um, these need to be based on uh, physical characterization, and we're going to touch on that a little bit. So. And the FDA is asking for this. I mean, if you submit your, your new drug into uh, application and it's freeze-dried, they're going to want to know, hey, what are the thermal properties? Did you characterize the solid? What's the glass transition temperature? All of these things they're going to be asking you for. So I'll tell you, you better have it. And, and it, it makes sense now that we understand these things. Again, this, these are what the things that we use to go in and optimize our cycle. And I'll tell you, when I got my start in the industry, it was not unusual to run maybe 15 to 20 pilot runs in our freeze dryer before we got something that worked. Um, and it was probably not optimized. Now, what I'm going to tell you is with some of the things we're going to talk about today, we can have a fully optimized cycle in about eh, three to four runs. So again, saving a considerable bit, uh, amount of time and money in development costs. Okay, now, basically freeze drying, for those of you who don't know, basically what we're doing uh, freezing a sample or freezing a solution, <clears throat> then creating a vacuum. What that does is causes that ice to go directly from a solid to a vapor, water vapor, that leaves the product and collects at the condenser. That's a process known as sublimation. Well, sublimation rate is can correlate to what we call something called vapor pressure, or how easy it is for that ice to convert to that water vapor and leave the product. Now, what I'm going to tell you is that it's very temperature dependent and it's not a direct relationship. Um, so basically what we see, so if we're freeze drying our product, say at negative 40, I mean the sublimation rate or the vapor pressure is very low. So it's going to take a long time to convert that, that ice to the vapor and, and get it out of your product. Now, if I tell you well, why don't you just dry it at negative 20, and you can see it's an exponential function. So it's going to be 100, 1,000 times faster by increasing that temperature. And that's the thing that a, a lot of the clients that come to me for this type of work don't understand. They don't understand that relationship. Well, you know, if I've got a product, I just keep it as cold as I can and run it as long as I can. Well, yeah, I mean, but if you could safely run that product at a warmer temperature and dry it, you know, in a, in a tenth of the time, why not do that? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Again, the driving force of freeze drying is that change in pressure. So we have a high pressure system at the surface of the product where all that water vapor is being generated and a low uh, chamber pressure at the surface of the condenser where that water vapor sticks. So we want to keep a wide 
uh, delta P, your change in pressure between those. So we're going to